So now we're in part two of psychological disorders. And in this part, we're gonna review schizophrenia, depressive and bipolar disorders, personality disorders, and sexual dysfunction disorders. And we're gonna do a quick overview. So here we go. Now we're gonna start with schizophrenia. And there are many symptoms for schizophrenia. As such, symptoms fall into two categories, positive and negative symptoms. The positive symptoms for our abnormal behaviors are characteristics, including hallucinations, delusions, disturbances in form of thought and speech, grossly disorganized behavior, and in, um, inappropriate affect. So let's look at some of those individually to make sure we're clear on what are positive symptoms. Hallucinations we'll start with. Now these are sensory perceptions um, in the absence of any external uh, sensory stimuli. These are imaginary sensations, usually either vi visual, there is nothing out there to see, and yet they may see things. So they're not from the external world, they're from inside. So sensory perception from inside. Same with the alternative, which would be auditory. Hearing voices. Delusions. Now these are false beliefs that are not commonly held by others in the culture. They cannot be changed in the light of strong evidence to the contrary. Two forms of delusions. They include delusions of grandeur, believing that they are somehow famous or important people, or delusions of persecution. They believe uh, the belief that one is being surveilled, spied on, or conspired against. So disturbances in the form of thought or speech, well, here the individual has difficulty completing one thought and are very disorganized, moving from subject to subject with very little in common uh, with the different topics. Do grossly disorganized behavior, this is a symptom an individual stands out in their dress, their behavior, their vocalizations, they're unpredictable and unusual. An inappropriate affect, in this case, the person's facial expressions, tone of voice and gestures do not um, reflect the, the, the emotion that uh, would be normally ex um, uh, emoted uh, or expected under the circumstances. Someone laughing at a funeral, for example, is inappropriate affect. Now, there are also not just positive, but there are negative symptoms. Negative symptoms involve loss of or deficiency in thought of behavior, thought and behavior, and that these are characteristics in normal functioning. Negative symptoms may include social withdrawal, apathy, loss of motivation, lack of goal-directed activity, very limited speech, slow movement, poor hygiene and grooming, poor behavior or problem-solving abilities, and some distorted, sen distorted sense of time. Uh, some schizophrenic patients show flat affect, particularly no emotion response at all. These negative symptoms uh, seem to have the poorest outcomes. As far as cause for schizophrenia, some sufferers have brain abnormalities that have been associated with schizophrenia. Brain abnormalities associated with uh, schizophrenia um, are low levels of neural activity in the frontal lobes, uh, defects in neural circuitry of the cerebral cortex and limbic systems, reduced volume in the hippocampus, amygdala, thalamus, and front lobe gray matter, abnormal lateralization of brain functions, and slow communication between hemispheres. We have a left and a right hemisphere, and the corpus callosum is in the between. It helps with the communication around lateralization. And I guess with schizophrenia, there's abnormal lateral, lateralization between these two um, hemispheres of the brain. Now, there are other potential causes, including genetic inheritance, in that schizophrenia can run in families. You'll see in the figure one on page uh, 267. It's also important to note that Genetics is not enough to explain all causes of schizophrenia. Now, according to, and we touched base in this in week, three, uh, week one, 
Uh, according to the Diathis stress model, schizophrenia develops when a person has a genetic disposition towards the disorder, the diathis, and more stress than the person can handle, thereby the stress component. All right. Now that's a very quick overview on schizophrenia and we'll now move to depressive and bipolar disorders. Now major depressive disorder is characterized by feelings of great sadness, despair, guilt, worthlessness, hopelessness, inability to experience pleasure, and in extreme cases suicidal uh, intentions. Now, sufferers may have changes in appetite, weight, sleep patterns, and energy, thinking, and concentration. Now, key symptoms are psychomotor disturbances. It's most common of mood disorders, and it's twice as common in women that is a, than in men. Now, a persistent dis, um, depressive disorder or dysmythia is a milder form of depression, and it compared to uh, compared to major depression, persistent depressive disorder lasts longer, about two years or longer, than major depression, but sufferers have few of the symptoms associated with major depression. Now, another version of, uh, of a depressed state is what's known as seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, and this is when depression comes and goes with the seasons. The amount of sunlight, less sunlight in the winter, seems to have an effect on some people more than on others. Light appears to be the solution for those people with SAD. Now we're going to jump into the bipolar. Bipolar is a disorder in which manic episodes alternate with periods of depression, usually with nor normal periods in between. Now a major manic episode is marked by excessive euphoria inflated self-esteem with wild optimism and hyperactivity. Sufferers rarely sleep, frenetically, frenetically engage in a flurry of activities, talk loud and fast, and skip from one topic to another. In a manic state, sufferers have temporarily lost touch with reality and may have to be hospitalized to protect themselves from others and the consequences of their poor judgment. I've known people who have severe um, bipolar and um, mania is a difficult part um, because it's a time, it's a circumstance that seems very good, very positive. Uh, no decision that you can make seems to be a bad decision to make and yet when you, if you were able to step away from the circumstances and become clear-headed and look back at that situation, you'd see, you know, that's way out there in extreme. I've known people who have jumped in their car and gone to a different country, and gone to the States to go gambling. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but their 16-year-old child was at home alone uh, for four days. Uh, that's not a good judgment. But it seemed like a good idea to them. Now this can be, as you can only imagine, very debilitating. As those diagnosed do not always see mania as problematic. In fact, they may, in contrast to depression, feel that mania is normal and may even stop medications. This makes that cycle of up and down mania, depression, mania, depression continue. So we can consider the role of genetic inheritance in neurotransmitters in major depressive disorder. Depressive and bipolar disorders are more likely to appear genetically related uh, appear in genetically related people with higher rates of risk for close genetic relatives. It does not explain all examples. However, genetics plays an important role for many. An imbalance in neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine are thought to play a role in depression and bipolar as they affect mood. Now we're going to chat or touch on the cognitive perspective is that depressed individuals have distortions in thinking. Specifically, they view themselves, their work, and their future negatively. They believe that they are deficient or some way unworthy and inadequate. They attribute their failures to their own inadequacies and believe that their future holds no hope. So that's the faulty thinking because not all things that happen to us can be interpreted negatively. Some of them can be more benign or even positively. And that's part of what we need to do. So now what we'll touch base on is um, 
uh, personality disorder. Um, personality disorder is an enduring pattern pattern of inner experiences and behaviors that deviate markedly from the expectations of individuals culture is pervasive and inflexible inflexible and has onset in adolescence or early childhood or sorry early adulthood so adolescence or early adulthood it's stable over time and it leads to distress or impairment now the dsm-5 lists 10 categories of personality disorders and the criteria are used to classify them overlap considerably. The DSM-5 groups personality disorders into clusters. There's a cluster A, a cluster B, and a cluster C. Cluster A personality disorders are characterized by odd behavior. So here we would find paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypical um, disorders that fall under cluster A. Cluster B personality disorders are characterized by erratic and overly dramatic behaviors. This would include um, narcissistic personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. Now they're associated with an increased risk of suicide and examples are borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. The borderline personality disorder is an individual um, is, is considered to be unstable in mood, behavior, and self-image, and that the social relationships um, seem to be uh, unstable. Um, they have an intense fear of, of abandonment and exhibit impulsive and reckless behavior and inappropriate anger at times. It um, makes suicidal gestures and performs self-mutilating acts. Now, bear in mind, with all of these descriptors, they don't represent a black and white, that's what they are. It's, a, it's on a continuum, and you will find people anywhere on this range. So these descriptions that come with your textbook don't represent, re don't represent all people in exactly the same way. Then cluster th uh, three or C, personality disorders. These are characterized by fearful and or anxious behavior. As examples here would be obsessive compulsive personality disorder, avoidant personality disorder, or dependent personality disorder. Now we're not gonna go through each of these. I just wanted you to be aware that with the DSM-5, in this instance, because there's so many different personality disorders, they choose instead to cluster them according to um, basic class of um, conditions. So lastly, we're just going to quickly review the sexual disorders. And this is what we're going to be touching on is very limited given what there is in, in a full course on abnormal psychology. Now, sexual disorders are ca categorized into one, sexual dysfunction, now this includes persistent problems that are caused that cause marked distress and interpersonal difficulty. They may involve sexual desire, the inability to have sexual desire or limited, or the inability for arousal or pleasure associated with sex or orgasm. Now most common are male erectile disorder and female orgasmic disorder. Now the second type are paraphilic disorders and paraphilias. These are reoccurrent sexual urges or fantasies or behaviors involving children, other non-consenting partners, non-human objects, or suffering or of humiliation. So in this category, you'll go anywhere from pedophilia to having fetishes around shoes or latex and rubber or around uh, sadomasochism. And then the third group is gender dysphoria. Now, gender dysphoria involves difficulty of a person of accepting one's identity as male or female. Not all people with gender dysphoria will go through transitions and become someone who is transsexual. Some people with gender dysphoria choose to remain in the same gender, but might dress differently or at least live their life differently. All right, so it's just a quick overview. Um, it is just because it's a, a um, because psychology one and psychology two are sort of like an introductory sampling course. You only get a bit and a bit on each one. 
but some topics are just much more interesting and you might want to pursue a whole course in it and abnormal psychology is one of those particular chapters all right everybody i hope this has been helpful for you good luck and carry on the good work we're almost there bye now